Hey, I'm Matt from MasterSketchup.com, and in this video, we're going to be going over a very simple project in SketchUp Free um, as an exercise to teach you some of the basic drawing tools in SketchUp. So head on over to app.sketchup.com, create an account, and let's get started. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is create the rectangle base at the bottom here. And again, you don't need any experience to follow this video. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to do this. So the first thing we'll do is grab the rectangle tool and you'll notice that there's a flyout menu that will appear on a lot of these different tools. Um, the default tool is the one we're looking for, which is this one right here. So we're gonna just click once to start the rectangle and then as we move the mouse you'll see these dimensions over here in the corner and so that's going to tell you what size the rectangle is so we can actually um, type in the dimensions that we want so you can see here we have 30 and 20 so we're going to click a second time to place the rectangle and then immediately follow up with the actual dimensions that we want so in this case we want the first dimension so we can see this is the small dimension and this is the larger dimension so that represents this edge and this edge so i'm going to type in 20 centimeters comma 30 centimeters now in this case i actually don't need to include the cm because the default unit in this particular model is centimeters but i'm just i just included those um, just so you can see how you typically would input a uh, a unit now the next thing we'll do is add the thickness to this base so to add thickness we're going to use the push pull tool so we'll grab the push pull tool and we'll click once to start We'll move the mouse up in the direction we want it to extrude and we'll click again just to set that in place temporarily and then that'll allow us to type in the dimension. So now you'll notice that I just type in 5, enter, and since the default unit is centimeters, um, it'll snap to centimeters. Now if you'd like to change the units in your model, just click on the model info panel here and you can change to any one of these unit types. All right, so the next thing I think I wanna do is add this notch in here. Now there's a few different ways we could do this. We could, we know this dimension is 7.5, so maybe what we would do is use the tape measure tool to create a guide from this edge at 7.5. So I'll click, I'll type in 7.5, now using this guide that was created by the tape measure tool, I can grab the line tool and create a new edge here. Now whenever you create an edge that divides a face, the face will actually become subdivided. So now you can see these are two separate faces that I can manipulate individually. So what we'll do is we'll grab the push pull tool and we'll extrude this out the five centimeters. So I'll just move my mouse out a little bit. I'll type in five centimeter, enter. And now we've got that offset. Now, alternatively, if I press control Z and back up a few steps, another way I could have done this was to, instead of creating a guide and then drawing a line, I could have just selected this edge here and then grabbed the move tool and moved this edge so I started clicked once to start the move and by tapping control you can tell SketchUp that you want to create a copy so I have a copy of this edge on my cursor right now and I I know I want that copy to be 7.5 centimeters from the original so I can just snap to this edge and well SketchUp is snapping to the 7.5 automatically because we had uh, previously um, had stuff at that distance so it, it knows it's like an important dimension but in this case um, you know you would just type in 7.5 enter and it creates that copy so that basically does the same thing for us and now gives us those two faces that we can offset so I'll go ahead and bring that back to five and we'll continue from here 
All right, so the next step I would say is to do this back piece here. So just like I showed you with this notch, we could create a guide. We could create a guide at five centimeters. We could draw a line like this, or we could select this edge and move it with the move tool and use the control key to create a copy. Um, but I'm gonna show you a third way. So another thing we could do is simply grab the rectangle tool and we could snap to this corner and then we can bring our mouse over to this side to snap to this edge and click there. So we have this first distance defined for us already. So we snap to 25 because that's just the distance um, from here to here. But the second dimension we want to type in uh, because we just snapped to an arbitrary um, distance. So to provide one distance for a rectangle when you don't want to change the other distance, what you need to do is use the comma. So in this case, I don't want to affect the first distance. So I'm going to just type in comma and then five, enter, and that's going to change only the second dimension. So you saw the edge moved to the five after I pressed enter. And from here, we can use the push pull tool once again to push up to um, the distance we need. So in this case, we know the overall height is 40 and we know the thickness here is five. So we can just do the math in our head and arrive, you know, we know it's uh, it needs to be 35 centimeters from the top of this or surface here. But what if, these, uh, what if these dimensions weren't so easily subtracted from one another? In that case, maybe we would want to use the tape measure tool to create a guide um, this distance. So in SketchUp, you can use the arrow keys to help you lock directions. So in this case, I want to go along the blue axis so I can tap the up arrow and that will lock the blue direction. And then I can click and then type in 40 centimeter enter, and that will create a guide at 40 centimeters from the bottom. I'm just gonna orbit around, and by the way, you can orbit and zoom with the middle mouse key if you haven't uh, figured that out already. I'm trying not to orbit around too much in this example video, just to keep things easy to follow. But okay, so now that we have this guide placed at the 40 centimeters, we can now go to the push-pull tool and hover over this face, click once to start, and we're just gonna move the mouse up until we snap to this guide that we created. And then we can click to finish. All right, so what about this angled offset? Again, there's a number of ways we can go about this, and I'm gonna show you a couple of different ways. So first we wanna erase this guide, we don't need it anymore. So um, we're gonna grab the eraser tool, and I apologize if I, I, I use keyboard shortcuts quite a bit. So if you see me activating tools, I'm trying to go to the menus so you can see what I'm clicking on. But um, E is the eraser um, keyboard shortcut, by the way. So there are a few ways we can create this angled face. So let's go ahead and look at a few of those different ways. So first of all, we need to have a pivot point right here. You can see there's an edge here. That way this face can pivot. So that's the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab the line tool and just click at that edge. And then you can see how SketchUp will snap to the red axis. That's important. And you can always force an axis lock by using those arrow keys. So the right arrow key and then you wanna make sure you've snapped all the way to that edge, and now we have that dividing edge. Now we don't know how far back this edge needs to go, so we don't know, you know this distance from here to wherever it needs to be, but we do know this distance, the 15 centimeters. So one way we could do this is by grabbing the tape measure tool and creating a guide at 15 centimeters, and now that gives us something to snap to. So when we grab the move tool, we can click on that edge and move along the green axis. And notice how SketchUp keeps everything together. 
you know, as we're moving things, SketchUp is sticky. So all the faces and edges that are connected to whatever we're trying to move are going to try to stay together. But to make sure that we're moving along the axis we want, we want to tap the left arrow key. So now that I've tapped the left arrow key, it's only going to move along that green axis. And then we can snap to this guide and click to finish. So that's one way to do it. I'm going to do control Z to undo. Another way that we could do this, since we know the 15 centimeters, we could actually grab the select tool and select this top face and then use the scale tool. Now the scale tool is found in this menu. So we can activate the scale tool. Now typically, um, most people think of the scale tool for 3D objects. So if you, if you, for instance, if I grab this whole, if I selected this whole thing and grab the scale tool, we get this three dimensional scale box that allows us to change the scale of everything that's selected. However, if we're just using the scale uh, feature on a single face, we get this flat um, scale manipulation uh, interface. And if we drag this box right here, like this, by default, it's going to ask for a scale factor. So right now I've scaled it to half the size that it was before. But in this case, I actually want to scale it to an absolute dimension. And that's totally possible with the scale tool. So all I need to do is tap 1.5 cm, so 15 centimeters, press enter, and you saw that face adjust just a little bit to the actual 15 uh, centimeters that we're looking for. All right, and then this last gusset here, we need to create a guide at 10 centimeters. That way we have something to snap to. So we'll grab the tape measure tool, we'll snap to that edge, and we'll create a guide at 10 centimeters. Then we'll grab the rectangle tool, which is right here. I'm gonna to snap to the intersection of the guide and this bottom edge, right where that intersection inference appears. I'll click once, and then I'm gonna drag up to roughly the size we're looking for, click again, and then I'm gonna correct this dimension. So I'll type in five, and then looking at this dimension here, I know I want 25, so comma, 25, enter, and the rectangle resizes. And then now we just grab the push-pull tool. Now, if this ever happens to you, if you have a face already selected, uh, the push-pull tool will basically um, work on pre-selected faces. So if you wanna clear, like if you have a face selected already and you activate the push-pull tool, um, if you wanna clear that selection, just activate the push-pull tool once more, or in my case, I like to use a keyboard shortcut, so I would just tap P to activate the push-pull tool, and then P once again to clear the pre-selection, and then that's gonna let you click and drag, and we're gonna snap to this front edge. You can see this is uh, brought right up to the front edge, and then to create the angle, I'm gonna show you two ways to do that. So the first thing we could do is grab the select tool, select this edge, grab the move tool right here, and we'll snap to this edge and bring it right down. And when you do that, when you merge um, edges together, SketchUp will automatically merge them. So edges can't exist one on top of the other. They're gonna always merge together. So an alternative way to get this angle would be to use the line tool and you can just snap to this corner, snap to this corner, and then grab the push-pull tool and extrude this like this to erase that face. So that's one thing that's cool about the push-pull tool. It can uh, create volume, but it can also erase volume. All right, so we are done. And anytime in SketchUp, as soon as you have a basic 3D shape created, you want to go ahead and turn it into a group to protect it. So I'm going to triple click this, right click, and make group. So this now allows you to move this object around as a single entity, and you can uh, put this right up against other, other 
entities and not worry about it merging with other geometry. So if I draw some other stuff here, I know that this is protected and I can move this around, I can intersect it, and it's not going to harm anything in this group. And if you ever want to edit the entities that are in the group, just double click on it with the select tool. And now you're working inside of that group. So everything you create or manipulate um, in this group will now be protected inside of this group. All right, that's going to do it for this video. I just wanted to do like a quick exercise video. Let me know if you like this sort of format where I'm kind of walking through a basic project. I'm happy to do some more just like this. So yeah, thanks for watching and make sure you hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. If you like this video, click the like button and I will see you in the next video.